Good morning, friends. Happy Tuesday. So today's the day. I am off for a venue visit to Littlestown Castle. For any of you who are new to my venue visits, basically I go around to some of my most popular venues and I give you a little video tour as well as point out some um, just little tips that you can have that will benefit your wedding photos on the day of your wedding if you're getting married at that particular venue. So I'm just heading out the door. It is absolutely freezing so I don't know if I'll be doing a whole lot of stories outside but um, there's lots to do indoors. Um, it's a great venue. If you are getting married there, um, stick around there'll be lots of tips um, and then afterwards I will be sharing some of the tips in my uh, PDF guide because I'll go around with my camera take some photographs of what I'm talking about and then compile them into a nice shiny PDF for anybody getting married there so I'll get in touch afterwards and I'll have that available to you um, I'm off now and I'll be there in the next hour and I will start my uh, start my stories then see you all there I've just arrived down to Littlestown Castle the way this is going to work is I'm going to run you through the way a typical wedding day would work. So we're going to start off with like getting ready in the morning um, to ceremony, to reception, portraits, all that kind of stuff. Um, so as soon as I get inside, I'll probably start off with the bridal suite and potential rooms and all that kind of stuff. And then we'll go from there. So when you first enter the house, you come up these magnificent stairway. And the bridal suite is just at the very top right through here. So I'm going to take you in there now show you around, give you a few tips. Okay, so here's the bridal suite. I'll show you around. Now, I've been around this castle a few times and there's no other room I would suggest for using for getting ready in the morning. This is the perfect room. Hair and makeup will take place in the bathroom which is fab um, because it's a nice um, bright location for uh, portraits of you getting ready but it also leaves the main room free for um, you putting on your dress details etc and um, all the mess is contained to in here and I know it's really, really hard the morning of your wedding, especially if you stayed here the night before, to keep the room as tidy as possible. But if possible, try and contain the mess to like one corner of the room so that way it's staying nice and pristine like it is now so that in the background of your photos there isn't too much mess. But again, really don't worry too much. Um, if we need to, we'll just move it on the day. So this little area here um, is where I like to usually hang the dress for some detail shots of the dress and have you put on your dress uh, when it's time. This is not a working bathtub, so don't worry. Your dress is going to be fine, nice and dry and clean. So my tip is if you need to have a mess the morning of your wedding day, just make sure when I'm your photographer especially, you have this area kept clean and clear. Um, and that's uh, mostly what we need. However, I will say, because I do like to sometimes come along to this side, and shoot from this way that's why i like to have the rest of the room nice and tidy so that when that's your backdrop there isn't too much mess in the back so try and contain the mess maybe over to that corner so i've worked in this room uh for getting ready shots during the summer and the winter light is perfect no matter what time of year so i don't have to worry this is the perfect room for getting ready there's really no other alternatives that i would suggest for the bride in the morning of the wedding we're gonna head downstairs now i'm going to show you a couple of options for where the groom can get ready um, there's no rooms upstairs that I would suggest simply because on the morning of the wedding I like to keep the two of you separate so that way you're not bumping into each other and by being downstairs um, That's the best way to do it. Plus the rooms downstairs you'll see they're perfect. Before I take you downstairs I'm just gonna give you a taste of what some of the other bedrooms in this castle looks like. Um, this is the one that's adjoining to the uh, bridal suite. Beautiful room. Down the hall a little bit further we have another bedroom. There is a lot of bedrooms in this place. Um, so plenty of space for your guests and another room. Now we can head downstairs. So for the groom prep downstairs at the back of the castle, you have two options. You have the library and you have the Guinness suite. I'm gonna take you into the Guinness suite first because that's the bedroom, whereas the library is just um, a room. So this is the Guinness suite downstairs. where if the groom is staying here, this is the ideal bedroom. 
neutral, big, as you can see, loads and loads of light. Now it is sunny today, but still, there will be plenty of light here even on a dull day. Through to the bedroom. So what I recommend, of course, if the groom is staying here, um, to keep the mess contained to the actual bedroom itself so that we have the sitting area free to do some nice portraits. Now, if the colors um, are important to you to keep consistent in your wedding photos, I would suggest that the groom get ready in here because it's consistent with the bridal suite upstairs. But I'm gonna show you the library room um, just as an alternative for the groom getting ready. And the library, as you'll see, is much bigger um, so that if there is a lot of groomsmen, that's kind of the more ideal room for the groom prep, I think, in the morning. The groom can always get ready in here initially and then go into the um, library as well. Um, but that's, that's kind of my suggestion. So the Guinness suite was just there in the hallway. Next room over is the library. And as you can see, it's quite a different look and feel to the Guinness suite and to the bridal suite. So if you want that contrast with the boys in the morning, this is a great spot. Plus, with that window, there's so much light coming in here. And also there's a lot more space if you have a larger um, bridal party. This room, also allows so much light regardless of the weather that after your ceremony you come back here if it's raining you can use this room for bridal portraits for families for group shots whatever you need i've used this backdrop for um the bridal party party before and it's it's just amazing now even if the groom is not getting ready here the morning of the wedding um, if he's getting ready nearby, if the ceremony is taking place here or nearby, I would recommend that he pop over to the castle into this room for some getting ready shots um, because it'll complement the photographs rather than say if he's at a hotel. Um, just using the backdrop that you have here is just, it's just amazing. This is totally unrelated to uh, wedding photos, but the really cool thing about Town Castle is there's all of these hidden doors. So where does that go to? Well, let me show you. If it's open, into another sitting room. Um, this room downstairs is typically empty. Um, so again, another good alternative for photos. If you need it, if you need the space, if it's raining outside, I like to come down here sometimes and do some just to be detail shots using the window light. But it's just another space to show you. That's one thing I love about Le Sun Castle is there is plenty of space for your guests to have their drinks reception around if they have to do them inside because the weather's bad outside for the drink reception. But yet there's still so much space to take all the necessary shots inside without anybody kind of overcrowding the space um, and having to shush away guests during that time. So that covers morning prep. I'm gonna take you around to a couple of spots for potential uh, ceremony locations inside and outside. If it happens to be bad weather and you need to do the um, ceremony inside, there's two locations that I recommend. One is the entryway, which I'll show you now. So this is the entry hall to the castle. And just behind me is the entrance door. So essentially you'll be making your entrance through these doors, walking up the aisle with chairs on either side, and up at the very top will be where you go get married and I'll just show you from the other location so we just we just came through there through all the bedrooms and everything and this is the main entrance obviously the table will be moved some of the furniture will be moved and I've done a ceremony in this spot it's up on the website if you want to have a look now this spot is a little bit bigger than the next spot I'm going to show you so if you have more guests this is a better alternative however I will say that the next spot I'm going to show you has better light um, especially for a photographer like me. This room, because you have that window as your background, um, you're gonna get a little bit more darker, moodier images in this space for your ceremony. So if we move through across the hallway, stairs up to the bridal suite, into the bar. Now this is where most of the drinks reception will happen. You have this amazing room. Amazing space, but lots of light. Now I had a wedding ceremony in here just this past month in the middle of winter, and there was plenty of light for my style of photography to get nice bright images. Now, as you can see, 
The room is a little bit smaller, although not that much smaller. But once you have all the chairs in here and the altar up there, it is um, better for smaller groups of ceremonies. But this is a fantastic space for a ceremony. Now the bar is behind you, but what we did was we took this uh, panel and put it in front of the bar so you didn't even see the bar. It was, um, it was lovely. I can't wait to share that wedding with you and you'll see the difference. They use the bar room a lot as well for like, say the night before your rehearsal dinner, if you have a smaller group. Um, I'm gonna take you outside the front now to show you a couple of spots for outdoor ceremonies. So this is the front entrance of the castle. Just inside that door was where I was showing you the entryway for the indoor ceremony space. But the front lawn is a spot I've not used for a ceremony, but it is, is an ideal spot because you can just literally walk out the door into the grass, down these stone steps. And as you can see, there's actually the perfect little archway where you could have your ceremony and all the guests out in the lawn there. So I just had to put up the hood because it just started raining a little bit and it is absolutely bitter cold. I just checked my compass though um, on the ceremony site um, that I just suggested. The uh, ceremony site is north facing, which means that the sun at most likely the time you'll have your outdoor ceremony will be at the bride's back, potentially causing a little bit of shadow on her face. So just be aware of that for that location. What I would suggest is potentially um, swapping sides so that the sun is coming onto the bride's face. But again, we can work with it. Um, and you know, depending on how harsh the sun is, it might not be too bad. Now I've just walked from the front of the castle through the gates, around to the side, to the back, where they usually have another spot for uh, ceremonies. They usually use this lawn. The bride will usually exit the castle through that door, which is the library room, down the steps, and the ceremony will be facing outwards. Now that is more east facing, just slightly southeast facing. So it is a better location for light because the sun will be in front of you or directly behind you, um, which will be a little bit more flattering in your photographs. Now another potential, which I have not seen, and I don't know if, if they will allow what you have to ask, is also having that as your backdrop. Um, because the time of day, the most likely thing will be the sun will be on the other side of the castle, making this all a very flattering shadow. And um, in my opinion, that's actually quite a nice backdrop compared to that. Although I do have a wedding to share from there, which was amazing. But that's another thing to, uh, to consider. You'll have a longer aisle here with guests on either side, but it is a tough spot to consider. I'm just going to give a different perspective. I came out into the lawns, and this is the back of the castle. So you could walk out down your aisle. There is a pretty impressive aisle entrance. And then you'd be facing that way for your ceremony. Please ignore all the construction going on at the moment. But this is the other spot I was talking about. Uh, the weather is pretty dismal today, but on a good day um, when it's clear, a little bit warmer. This is beautiful light for an afternoon ceremony. And you just have to stand between those new arches. A nice shady spot. And there you go. Uh, may as well show you this little spot as well for portraits. Afterwards, just show you some of the logs very quickly. I like to come down here for bridal portraits afterwards. Beautiful spot. There's loads and loads and loads of grounds here at Luttrell Town. I like to stick close to the castle for all the portraits afterwards so that we're not wasting too much time, but there is a vast amount of land that you could just jump in a car and go anywhere and have a different view. Now, if you do want to take photographs indoors, you would definitely use some of the spots that I already showed you. The library is great. The room next to the library is great. Um, I have one little secret spot that I found in the last wedding. I just came across it. It's a lovely little private spot, so I'm going to show you that now. It's upstairs, not too far from the bridal suite. You can always use this little archway just at the entrance for some covered portraits outside um, if the weather is bad. Um, because sometimes it is just nice to get outside for the light in case inside is a little bit dark. But I'll show you some spots down too. So if it's a nice day, most likely your guests will be outside in the garden for your drink reception. If it's a cold, bitter day, rainy like today, most likely they'll be downstairs in the bar, in the library, 
in that little room off to the library or in the main entry hall. Um, I'm going to show you one little spot that I found. Because Lutrell's Town is so big, you have a lot of hallways and they've done really well with putting a lot of light in. Um, so you have plenty of options if you just want to escape from all of your guests and not have them accidentally coming on top of you for f while you're taking your portraits with your photographer. This little spot I found, again, it's, um, it's quite a decent sized space if you want to use it for um, portraits indoors if the weather is bad. Especially nice for kind of more moodier um, styles of photography. And back to the main staircase, which is beautiful, well lit. Look at that ceiling. Lots of options. Now the last thing I'm going to show you is the reception room where you will be having your dinner. So here's the back of the bar. And you may have noticed just off of the bar is the main reception room. So your guests will come in here. And this is where you will be having your dinner. Now my suggestion for this room, uh, if the venue allows, of course, is to set up more of the tables in the, concentrate them on the middle of the room as opposed to the outside of the walls, right? It's, I've seen a lot of times where they left like more of a gap in the middle. Um, definitely try and fill the middle up as opposed to more of the walls because they have these really big windows when your photographer takes detailed shots of the room and of the tables, especially a big wide shot of the room and the tables, it's going to look more flattering to those photos. Otherwise, this side of the room is gonna be um, brighter than this side of the room. That side of the room will be lost a little bit more in the photographs. So the way they have it set up with the tables in the middle right now is lovely, really, really lovely. Obviously, um, it's there's only two tables set up, so it's not a very big wedding they have set up, but definitely if there's a lot more tables, try and fill up the center as opposed to leaving a gap in the middle. Now, if by chance, for whatever reason, that is the suggestion, what I would suggest is to have your cake table in the middle of the room. Um, so that way, it just balances out the room a little bit more and there's not this big gap in the middle. I've seen the cake table over there, which can work fine as long as it's pulled away from the window enough. Um, but if there's gonna be a gap in the room in the middle, put your cake in the middle. Now, if you are having a smaller wedding and the luxury of being able to choose a different spot for your cake table, rather than putting it against the window, because I generally try and avoid putting it against the window just to avoid that very big uh, bright light behind the cake and creating a big shadow. Now, obviously, you can work around it um, as a photographer, but somewhere like using where those chairs are as the backdrop of your cake table um, with light coming inside is better or somewhere like against one of these walls where it's just a little bit more evenly lit um, is always going to be a better option. Or even in another room altogether, you can put your cake, which I've seen done out here in the middle of the room. Works wonders because you have that light coming in from above. Um, and it's just another alternative to put your cake on display, um, get the, you know, get your guests up out of dinner and your band DJ will be set up in here so they can go straight from cake cutting straight into uh, to dancing so everybody's up on their feet. So I think that is about it from my venue visit to Lettrell's Town Castle. What did you think? Um, was there enough tips? Was there anything that I didn't cover that you had questions about? Let me know, I'm happy to answer them afterwards. Um, so yeah, so I've taken all the photographs on my camera I'm gonna go back to my office, convert them into a nice PDF with all the tips that I've shared already today. So if you are getting married at Lettrell's Town Castle or considering it, feel free to send me an email and I will happily send you on the PDF. So just a big thank you to those of you who listened to my stories today. Um, where would you like me to go next? I have to plan my next venue visit. Um, so give me some suggestions.